So in this set of Snap Circuits videos, we're looking at Project 656, the electromagnetic layer, up to Project 683, the relay whistle photo vibrator. Essentially all the products involving the electromagnet. So there's Project 656, the electromagnet to layer. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So here we have our 6-volt supply, currently we have our V6 adapter going through our slide switch, our 6-volt lamp, and then of course the electromagnet itself with the little iron roar core rod installed in it. And when we power this circuit on, there's a short delay before the lamp powers up and you just see that the 6 volt lamp there it's actually dim, it's not at full intensity because again it's connected in series with our electromagnet. And the electromagnet, because there's a delay there, it's a large coil of wire, it's a great big inductor. And so when you first power on the circuit it needs to charge up the magnetic field in the electromagnet here and then when that field is filled up then the lamp can light up and because of the resistance in the coil here our 6 volt lamp never achieves full brightness but it's just enough for it to be dim there so that's how project 656 works now project 657 is electromagnet to layer 2 so we're just going to modify the circuit a little bit there So now we got project 657 on the board there and we got our meter set to the low setting. And so it's basically connected in parallel with our 6 volt lamp there. And what we'll see here is when we power up the circuit we'll see the needle rise on the meter showing the increase in current as the coil gets charged up. So as you saw there you saw the meter kind of rise and then move over and that's because again our electromagnet was getting charged up and we can see the current increases as it's getting charged up here that more current starts to go through our 6 volt lamp there. We'll let that discharge some and repeat it here again. So yes that allows you to visually see on the meter aside from the lamp there the increase in current. So that's project 657 so project 658 is the two lamp electromagnet layer. So let's modify the circuit for that. So it's a little different. So what I will do is put let's see. Take out the best way to potentially do this. I can do it that way. So now we have project 658 and with this here instead of the first one where we just had the 6 volt lamp we now have the 6 volt lamp and the 2.5 volt 3 volt lamp in series together with the electromagnet. And just like before, there'll be a delay, but because there's less voltage for this lamp, there are 2.5 volt 3 amp will light before the 6 volt one does. And then as you saw when we turned it on there, our 2.5 3 volt lamp came on first, followed by our 6 volt lamp. And because they're in series along with that, of course now the 6 volt is not as bright as it was by itself. But again, we still have that delay effect because of the electromagnet's coil having to be charged up when the circuit is first powered up. But because our 2.5 3 volt lamp is a lower voltage than our 6 volt one, this one comes on first before the 6 volt one does. So that's how Project 658 works. Now, Project 659 is electromagnet current, and that's how it looks on the board. So instead of having our lamps in series, we're now going to have our meter in series. And we're going to take our meter and set it to the high setting. Put it there. And here. And so now when we power up this circuit, 
we can see with the meter how much current the electromagnet is drawing. And from this we can gauge that it's about, let's see, 700 milliamps or so. Because on the high setting the scale is 1 amp. So we can gauge from the meter reading that the electromagnet on 6 volts is drawing about 700 milliamps. In fact, we're actually supposed to be using 3 volts. So let me move this around. Because for this we actually use 3 volts, so we need it like that. Now, of course, with 3 volts, it should be a lot less. So for that, we're doing, only doing maybe 200 milliamps or so at 3 volts. So that's how Project 659 works. And now we're going to move on to Project 660, which is electromagnetism. So here we have Project 660, electromagnetism. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So I've opted to not have the press switch here and instead run it continuously off of my 6 volt supply here to make things a little easier. So with this project, we're basically using the electromagnet to kind of discover things that are magnetic versus which aren't. Like, for instance, our snap circuit connectors here. You can tell that these are metal, but these are non-magnetic because, as you see, it does not get picked up by the magnet here. But I have this little piece from a computer's VGA plug, and this is a magnetic piece of metal because if I take it there, I can have it become attached to the iron rod. And it will stay that way as long as it's powered up until I disconnect power. Once I disconnect power, see now it's no longer an electromagnet. Once I put the power back, it's now able to conduct to it again. And I've got other items here too that are also metal, but again, like for instance this mono adapter, that is not magnetic, so it's not attracted to it. But let's see, how about a screw used for a computer fan? See, that's metal, so it's attracted to it. So, that's essentially how Project 660 works. Now, Project 661 is electromagnetism and a compass. Now, I don't exactly have a compass on hand for this project, but essentially how the project works is you have the electromagnet like I have it here, and you take an ordinary compass and you move it around the electromagnet and as you're doing that ten, the uh, north point of the compass tends to always follow the magnet as you move it around because again it's generating a magnetic field right now as long as it's energized and by that the compass will react to that magnetic field and always point toward the north or the south pole, depending which way you have the electromagnet facing relative to the compass. So that's how Project 661 works. So Project 662 is electromagnetism in paper clips. I'm going a bit there to it. And for this, we finally get to break out the little pack of paper clips that they have within the snap circuit set here. So never be used yet. I'm going to finally get to use these paper clips. So, yellow paper clips. And we take one of these. Just like the previous project, we can verify that they are indeed metal because they are attracted to the magnet. And of course we can do multiple things. Like, let's see, we can link them. So, we can see that the magnetic field is traveling through the paper clip, and there's enough there right at the tip to be attracted to the next paper clip. What else can we do? Oh, let's see here, let's have some fun in. As they show in one of the pictures there, we can take our two snaps and create a little bit of a weight here. 
like so. Take our electromagnet away. And you see we have a little bit of that on the bottom. And I don't see now how well that's showing. But the electromagnet is holding this up. So it shows that it's got some weight carrying capacity with the electromagnet there. And we can do a couple of other things. Let's see. Let's create a ring. So we'll take our magnet. Do, well, let's see if we can do it that way. Take another paper clip. Bottom. Well, I guess we can just flip them over like so. And as you see from there, we've got the paper clips all clinging together. Let's see if I can get one more to cling off of that. Probably don't have a strong enough field left to get one more on here. Nope. So there you go. So that's how Project 662 works. Now I'm going to move on to Project 663, which is electromagnet suction. So here we are with Project 663, Electromagnet Section. So with that, we kind of demonstrate how the electromagnet pulls things in. So I've gone ahead and put the press switch on in there. The first thing we'll do is we'll take our iron core rod and put it in there about halfway or so. And when we energize the electromagnet, it pulls that iron core rod in because now that there's a magnetic field being generated on that coil it now of course has the rod being attracted to it and thereby it pulls it inside the electromagnet and we can show this with other metal objects like the paper clips so I've taken a paper clip broke it in half and then kind of squunched it down so that we can kind of fit it within the electromagnet here. So if I take paper clip and just gingerly place it right about there. So when I power on the electromagnet, we'll see that paper clip get pulled into it. See? And the paper clip will stay inside that electromagnet as long as it's powered up until we take the power away. And then it will come right out. Same thing for the electromagnet, of course. The electromagnet can't come out until we take the power away. So, that's Project 663. So now we're going to move on to Project 664, which is the electromagnet tower. So you have Project 664, the electromagnet tower. There is in the book and here is on the board. So I did it a little differently by just having the cables there with our press switch. And for this I'm actually going to bring the camera down. Because we need want to look at this at an angle if we can. So it makes it a little more viewable. So here we've got our little paper clip as usual. And we're going to drop in. So I'm going to press the press switch and hold it down and then we're just going to drop this in there and as you see as long as the electromagnet is energized it pulls that little paper clip piece in there and holds it there suspended until I release the power and as you can see it has dropped below the electromagnet there and I've raised the height up of it with little one snaps there so that if we press the press switch again it pulls it right back up into the electromagnet and we can keep doing this, pressing the press switch on and off. Because again, every time we energize the electromagnet, we pull that little piece of metal there into the electromagnet's coil. So we 
they can make it oscillate by turning it on and off like that. Back up. So that is project 664. So now let me reconfigure this a little bit. And now I'll change this over to project 665, which is the paperclip compass. So for that, we're going to take two of our good paper clips here, and we're just going to link them together. So I'll get one here. And link them together like so. I'll put my iron core rod back in. Might actually have to bring the camera back down for this one to show it. So I'm going to hook up the power to our electromagnet and then what I'm going to tell you is just take our little thing of paper clips and hold them above the electromagnet without it actually coming in contact with it and you see how it was kind of dangling and then get okay, nice like that and you see as I move it around the bottom paper clip always goes toward electromagnet effect I got it touching there Did you see this is how your compass in one of the previous projects would be doing because it's always going to try to point to the magnet there as we move it around And if we take the power away, it stops when we put the power back. It goes right back onto it. So that is how Project 665 works. Bring this back to position. So Project 666, who is the number of the beast, we're going to be looking at the adjustable paperclip suspension. So here we are, Project 666, the adjustable paperclip suspension. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we have our 6 volts going to our slide switch. We have our electromagnet with the little paperclip, which is kind of hanging below it right now because the circuit's off, connected across our meter. And our meter and electromagnet are being fed via our NPN transistor, and that's being controlled via our adjustable resistor on the base of the NPN there with our resistors limiting it and we also have our red LED here that shows us how much current is being fed via how our adjustable resistor is set and then we have our diode which is of course making sure the current is only going one direction so when we turn the side switch on our paper clip gets fed up into the electromagnet there and we see I got a full current on there with our red LED and now as we adjust the variable resistor we change the amount of current in there and our paper clip will get lower inside the electromagnet until it falls out and comes back in so what we'll do is go ahead and bring the camera down so we can have a little better look at our electromagnet while it's doing this So have our variable resistor in the back over here and as I slide it you can see briefly the paper clip in there and I can change how high it is if you look at the top right here where it's sticking through I can manipulate it inside the electromagnet there So, that is how Project 666 works. Get this repositioned. So now we're going to move on to Project 667, which is the adjustable paper clip with delay. So we're going to modify the circuit a little bit there. So we're going to take our resistor and our LED out, and instead going to replace it with capacitor 
positive going this way, plug this in, and then we're also going to use the speaker in place of one of our resistors. So it's a little more current through. Turn the circuit back on. Make sure it could get sucked in there. And so now you see with the way that the project works there is that we have our paper clip in our electromagnet but because we have the C4 capacitor here with 100 microfarads in our speaker we now actually have a delay before the paper clip falls out because now the capacitor has to discharge first when we change our variable resistor down and because of that it affects the base of our NPN transistor there course changing the current on our electromagnet. So let me bring it back down once again. See if I can probably get a view down in there. I don't know how well I can. So again we have our meter there and as I current changes you can hear and also potentially see the paper clip move in there as the current level changes slowly So that is how Project 667 works. So now we're going to move on to Project 668, which is the photoresistor paperclip suspension. So here we are, Project 668, the photoresistor paperclip suspension. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we get six volts as usual going to our slide switch that then goes through our electromagnet here without the iron core rod because we have the little paper clip in there and it's being controlled via our NPN transistor and its base is being fed by both our photoresistor and our variable resistor and by changing the variable resistor of course we can change how much is on the base there and how much current ends up going through our electromagnet plus our photoresistor is also feeding that so depending on the variable resistor setting depends how much the photoresistor also applies to that so when we power on the circuit our little paper clip piece gets pulled into the magnet there and as I adjust the variable resistor of course the height there lowers but this time it doesn't completely fall out when we go to the bottom unless I cover up the photoresistor and in fact it actually is able to pull it back up when I let some light in if you can hear the paper clip falling onto the table there I don't know if you can see it with the camera zoomed out where it is here. So let's bring the camera in to the electromagnet there. See if we can get everything in view here. So by adjusting our rail resistor, as you see, our paper clip inside moves around. And depending on how I cover the photoresistor over here, you can see on the bottom of the, there the paper clip moving about. And by adjusting the railroad resistor ever so slightly, we can adjust, of course, the friction on that. And you can see it bouncing inside. So, that is how Project 668 works, and now we're going to move on to Project 669, which is the paperclip oscillator. So here are Project 669, the paperclip oscillator. 
There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we have our 6 volt supply go into our slide switch that controls the whole circuit. We have our S3 relay in the relay context are controlling the power to our electromagnet on and off. And the relay itself is being controlled over here by our oscillator circuit. So we have our variable resistor and our D3 diode. They're feeding both our NPN and PNP transistor set up in a Darlington style as we've seen before. And we have our capacitors here that are going to charge and discharge which helps control the oscillation. And then of course our variable resistor controls the rate of oscillation in the circuit which will then determine how quickly on and off our relay is there. So when we turn it on, the first action that we bring the camera down as usual because it makes it a little easier to see it this way. So when we power up our circuit, we have our paperclip piece there. As you see it gets pulled into the electromagnet and the relay energizes. Now, for the oscillation part, we're going to slide the variable resistor back until we get the relay turning on and off. And when that happens, we'll see the paper clip fall in and out of the electromagnet. So we got the variable resistor to a point where now the circuit is able to oscillate where the relay clicks on and off. And every time the relay clicks, it energizes and de-energizes our electromagnet over here. And as you see from that, it's pulling our paper clip in every time it's energized, and when it de-energizes, the paper clip falls out. Get it to oscillate just a little bit slower. Oscillate just a little bit faster there. And that's all the way on. Back up. So that is how Project 669 works. And now we're going to move on to Project 670, which is Paperclip Oscillator 2. So here we are in Project 670, the Paperclip Oscillator 2. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So this time we've eliminated the relay controlling our electromagnet. This time we just have a simpler oscillating circuit with our Darlington transistor setup and our one 10 microfarad capacitor there charging and discharging. And by that we can then control the output to our electromagnet and make it oscillate that way. So... Bring the camera down as usual. Let's look at our circuit here. So you can see our little paper clip is right beneath there. And we have our slice, our variable resistor all the way over. So we power on the circuit. Obviously our little paper clip piece gets pulled into the electromagnet there. You can kind of see it right at the top. And if we pull the variable resistor all the way to the left, it falls. Now we're going to adjust the variable resistor so we get to the point where the circuit is oscillating at a rate that we can see the paper clip going up and down as that capacitor charges and discharges. Let's see, we speed it up a little bit here. So again, as that capacitor charges and discharges, the circuit oscillates with our two transistors there connected together. And by that, the oscillation makes our paper clip go up and down in the electromagnet as the electromagnet charges and discharges. And of course, that's when we get it to a point where it's no longer oscillating. So, 
that is Project 670. So now Project 671 is Paperclip Oscillator 3. And we're going to modify the circuit a little bit with another capacitor and the speaker. So let's see. Let's see. So we want capacitor number 4. That's that one. There is capacitor 4. Okay, here's capacitor 4. Plus going this way. And we need our speaker in there as well. So by now adding the speaker in there, we kind of change the rate of oscillation. So, so turn on the circuit as before. Again, our paper clip gets pulled in there, as we can see. And now let's start adjusting it to it oscillates. Because the paper clip is stuck, that's why. There we go. Just had to get the oscillation right. Yeah, the paper clip end there is getting hung. Ooh, it actually shot it out. It actually shot onto the speaker. But you see what's going on here is we've changed the oscillation rate. Oh, it's actually oscillating at such a certain rate that it's actually shooting the paper clip bit out of the electromagnet. And getting hung up on the edge because it's going out so high. Increase the oscillation a little bit there. And because the speaker is in line with that other capacitor, you also hear the oscillation through the speaker. Bring it back up here. So that's how Project 671 works, and now we're going to move on. To project 672, which is the paperclip oscillator 4. So here we have project 672, the paperclip oscillator 4. That's how it looks in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's the same circuit as before, but we've added our red LED with a 100 ohm resistor in line with it, so it will flash as the circuit oscillates. So we turn it on. Our little paper clip piece gets pulled into our electromagnet and our light is constantly on and bring the camera down as usual to look at the oscillation part of the circuit and we get the circuit oscillating of course it shot the paper clip right out See, we're shooting the paper clip right out. <laughs> I 
until it works as before, but this time we have the LED flashing along with the oscillation. So that's how Project 672 works. Now Project 673, we're going to replace the micro 100 microfarad capacitor with a 3 snap and the speaker with the 6 volt lamp. So we'll take this out and this out. We're going to go ahead and leave our LED there. So let me get a 3 snap and our 6 volt lamp. And now this will pulse with the system just like our LED does. So we turn the circuit on. You see it's a very different rate of oscillation there. So let me turn it turn it down since we don't have the capacitor there. Trying to get the paper clip in the right place. And see from our pulsing there how fast it's doing it here. Just throwing the paper clip out. So you get the idea from this when we put the lamp in there how different it oscillates. So that's how Project 673 works. Now Project 674 is the oscillating compass. So we're going to put our rod back in. Let me move the camera up a little bit for this. So now this time we're going to use our two linked paper clips that we had from before when we did the little confidence experiment. But this time we're going to show the effect while the circuit is oscillating. And you see as the circuit oscillates, it's making the paperclip dance back and forth. And that's because the electromagnet is cycling on and off so quick, it's pulling the paperclip toward it and then away from it. So that's how Project 674 works. So now we're going to move on to Project 675, which is a high frequency vibrator. So here we have at Project 675, the high frequency vibrator. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So we've got our electromagnet off to the side here with our little paper clip. It is connected across the outputs of our relay here. And so we get our oscillator circuit as usual. 
but this time it's configured a little differently so we have a little more frequency, a higher frequency of oscillation to control our relay there. And then we'll look at our paper clip. So I will take the camera and get it down to our electromagnet here if I can. So how to get this thing as low as possible. We see our paper clip right there. We'll apply the circuit, and we got our slide switch all the way to the left, so it's not oscillating. We'll start making the circuit oscillate, and we'll see the paper clip bounce up and down there. That's how Project 675 works. Now Project 676 has us adding the speaker and the 100 microfarad capacitor in, which you might have seen a little bit earlier. So I've just connected that, so now we've added that in. I don't think it makes too much difference, but we'll do it again anyway. But this time you'll hear the oscillation through the speaker as well. So that's project 676, and now we're going to move on to project 677, which is the Siren Paperclip Vibrator. So here we are at project 677, the Siren Paperclip Vibrator. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So this time we have our electromagnet having output from our alarm IC, and it's kind of being amplified via our NPN transistor there to kind of make it oscillate. And we have our capacitor with a press switch with our speaker to act as a bypass. So when we turn this on, the paper clip starts vibrating and it produces a fairly high frequency. I don't know how well the camera is picking it up here, but what I'll do is I'll insert the iron core rod here and that will magnify the effect. So that makes it a little more audible to hear now. And so you can see we can change it a little bit by using the speaker there. Now as I've said in previous projects, this alarm I see I have is damaged. So what I will do is take this off and put it here because I don't think we're going to be able to demonstrate a whole lot with the alarm I see with this damaged condition.
Yeah, that's the same. Alright, now let's try just points. Yeah, I need you there, because we've gone through Project 678, it's so 679 now. And I think that is shorted. Yeah, that's shorted. Yeah, that's not doing anything. So yeah, that uh, alarm I see is on its way out too, it looks like. So that's basically Project 677 through 679. Just different sound effects from the alarm I see. So now we're going to move on to Project 680, which is alarm vibrator with LED. So here we are with Project 680, the alarm vibrator with LED. There it is in the book, and here it is on the board. So it's kind of like the last project. We just added our red LED and 100 ohm resistor in there, so it... So it behaves as before, but of course when we use our press switch with our LED there, our LED now flashes with it. But we still have the vibration of the paperclip in there. Now project 681, we're going to modify the circuit a little bit. So here we are, project 682, the relay whistle vibrator. There it is in the book, here it is on the board. So we've got our S3 relay, which is going to control our output to our electromagnet here. We've got our oscillator circuit with our PNP and MPN transistors as before, but this time we'll be using our whistle chip and our transformer to control the oscillation and frequency and a couple of other things with it. So we turn on the circuit without the paper clip in there. We can use our variable resistor here and adjust that frequency of oscillation on the relay. But of course you hear our whistle chip with our transformer there, which is also part of our base of our NPN transistor there, which is helping drive that. So let me bring the camera now to our electromagnet and we'll watch the paper clip on that. So there's our electromagnet. I'll put our paper clip in there. And then we'll adjust this to where it oscillates. Oscillating there, you can see that it is oscillating that paper clip pretty good in there. Screw it out. Anyway, I think you get the idea of that. So now with Project 683 is the Relay Whistle Photo Vibrator. So with that, we're going to modify the circuit a little bit here by taking our R4 resistor out, putting the photo resistor in its place. And then also we're going to connect our speaker, 6 volt lamp, and D3 diode. That's going to take a little bit of rework here as well. So, let's see if I can get speaker in here. Oh, it's got a little tight fitting. I 
need the lens clip. Oh, the speaker can't go in like that. <laughs> the speaker can't fit like that. Well, they got it in the book with the speaker trying to go under there, but the speaker physically is not really going to fit under there. Well, I guess it can. I don't know why it was having such difficulty. Oh, that's because of the way that it goes. Do it this way. And then our six volt lamp stick like so in here. Modify it for the book just a little bit. Now we're kind of running. Well, we'll do it this way. goes there because our diode goes there. There we go. And then connect it off of that. Let's see how this circuit oscillates now. If it oscillates at all. Probably it needs extra light in there. Maybe it needs some light. Just needs a little light. Quite get it to do it. Oh, well, I guess you sort of get the idea of how Project 683 works. Maybe it works a little better for you than it does there, but. Anyway, that's Project 683, and that concludes this set of Snap Circus videos.